As we just reported, district attorneys wield a lot of power in their discretion on charging decisions and are regarded even as holding a quasi-judicial standing. So what if they decide to change it up, try to change the criminal justice system using their discretion? There is a movement of progressive prosecutors across the country, notably like the Philly DA, who is the subject of a PBS series by the same name. Tonight, we learn more about progressive prosecutors from the director of the UW Law School Prosecution Project and former prosecutor himself, Lanny Glenberg. And thanks very much for being here. Thank you for having me. So what does it mean to be a progressive prosecutor? Well, there's no particular credential uh, to be a progressive prosecutor, but the ph philosophy of progressive prosecutors is that they want to wield their prosecutorial power, which is substantial, uh, the most powerful actor in the criminal justice system, that they want to wield that uh, discretion and prosecutorial power, both to serve the interest of public safety, but as well to address real problems uh, that we have in our criminal justice system, the problems of mass incarceration. Uh, this country incarcerates more people than any other country. Uh, that burden disproportionately falls on people that are underrepresented, that are poor, people of color. And uh, the progressive prosecutors want to wield their authority to address those problems, as well as, of course, uh, the main uh, function of a prosecutor uh, to address public safety, to ensure public safety. So what's an example of how they would proceed in a particular case in a progressive way? Uh, well, uh, by being mindful uh, of the consequences uh, of engaging in uh, a prosecution. By that, I mean uh, the traditional approach to prosecution, more traditional, been dominant over the last uh, four decades, is simply to charge a crime, seek conviction, and confine somebody, uh, confine somebody that committed a crime uh, as a means of addressing public safety. In reality, that hasn't served us so well. Uh, as I mentioned, we have substantial numbers of those incarcerated, and if incarceration and confinement equaled public safety, we would have the safest country in the world, and we don't. So in an individual case, a prosecutor needs to be attentive to uh, not only just the charging and conviction and confinement, but what are the other costs of uh, commencing a crime, of seeking a conviction? Not just the monetary cost of confining somebody, but there are real social costs as well. And being attentive to those social costs, being mindful about the type of penalty uh, that a prosecutor seeks or whether to issue charges in the first place, uh, what will the consequences on the broader community be, on the individual, their connection to family, work, stable housing? Those are the things that the research tells us results in individuals desisting from crime, not just confinement. Uh, so focusing on that and being mindful of the consequences on other factors uh, to bring about public safety. Is there a pushback on, in, on this kind of uh, method uh, or sensibility on the part of the more traditional uh, prosecutors? Uh, in, indeed, there is uh, resistance. It, it varies from community to community. Uh, prosecutors, of course, as uh, you reported uh, just a few moments ago, uh, are, are elected county by county. Uh, local sensibilities affect the priorities of prosecution. And so that resistance may be different in different places. But indeed, uh, generally, or, or to some of the uh, progressive prosecutors, there is some resistance. Uh, it can come from a number of places. One, prosecutors themselves. Uh, it is risky uh, to look at a new model of prosecution or to be uh, more sensitive to the sort of things that I described. Taking a uh, thoughtful and nuanced view of addressing public safety as a political matter hasn't been the approach. Uh, political safe, you know, what's been politically safe is to run against crime, run against criminals. So there's political risk associated with it. Uh, as well, resistance can come from uh, any number of uh, other actors within the institutions of the criminal justice system, whether it be the bench, other prosecutors, uh, police, uh, or voters even. Uh, because as I said, uh, these are elective offices and uh, there are political consequences for these decisions. And we know uh, that Philadelphia's DA, Larry Krasner, is a progressive prosecutor who pledged to end mass incarceration. Are there uh, similar prosecutors across Wisconsin? Is, is it kind of a growing movement uh, in states like Wisconsin? Uh, I think it's a growing movement in a lot of places. And, and there is a spectrum of prosecutors from what I would describe as very traditional, focused on charging, convicting, and confining, to uh, the type of progressive model that we're talking about uh, now. 
Uh, there are some uh, that are, uh, and this is independent of party uh, across the state, that uh, have a more reform-minded approach and a more reform-minded or progressive mentality. I want to be careful to say that I'm not using the term progressive in the political sense, but uh, in the sense of a new approach, uh, reviewing or revisiting uh, what the priorities of prosecution are. So certainly there are uh, some in this state. We have uh, the spectrum from traditional to more progressive. All right. We need to leave it there. Really fascinating stuff. Lanny Glenberg, thanks very much. Thank you, Ms. Freiberg.